We typically deal with men who have drug and alcohol addiction, but it's mainly life control and issues. And we kind of believe that everybody as cliche as it is has a, a God-shaped hole, a void in their life. And so we introduce them to Christ and that usually takes care of it. It's not behavior modification, but heart or soul transformation. And so we believe that you deal with the inner man and the soul and the spirit, and then that will change what the outer man does. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, I believe that a biblical principle is in the kingdom, you don't live a rehabilitated life, you live a resurrected life, a new life in Christ. Now you have a seven month program, I believe, that the people uh, participate in. Yes, sir. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, maybe describe a typical day. First of all, let me ask you, the people that come to you, are most of them still on their addictive substance? Uh, we, if they're on it really bad, we have them go through a detox before they come just That's for the withdrawal symptoms and everything like that. But yeah, most of the time it's right out of the addiction. Yes, sir. Yeah, because you can't really take this say I'm, I'm doing it today, tomorrow I'm not going to do it. It takes time to overcome that. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about maybe a typical day. What kind of, what do you do? What is your program? So it's very structured in the, um, in the application it would be called like a spiritual boot camp. So there's a lot of a, a discipline and a structured environment. So we wake the guys up at 6 a.m. every morning and they get up and come downstairs by 6.30 for devotion, a quiet time, a Bible study to start their day off with that foundation. And then um, eat breakfast, keep the campus up, whether it be cleaning bathrooms or just sweeping and mopping, just general maintenance type stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we start every day with a chapel. So we have different pastors and speakers and leaders from the community come and do chapel every morning. And then we have classroom, like a group studies, which is like a lecture phase where there's a teacher. Mm -hmm. And then we have our second type of classroom, which is personal studies, which is catered more specifically for each man. So um, say one man struggles with anger a lot. We give him things to work with and study on that, are, that pinpoint anger, different scriptures, um, different books, different tracks and things to read. So we sit down with them during counseling sessions and really find out like why it is that they've gone down the road of addiction. There's oftentimes bitterness or, or insecurity or something that leads to that. So we try to pinpoint that and then give them things to study that'll help them with it. And then you have lunch and then either it's work time, whether it be we help out um, with a local retirement home or with the uh, food bank downtown or just at our thrift store, which is Blessingdale's, which raises a lot of money for us. Mm -hmm. It's on campus. Or mowing the grass and just upkeep of the property. That's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, and Thursday. We take the guys to the Y because we believe that it helps to have physical exercise as well. And then dinner, and then a, a free time and a study hall time, and then chapel at night. And every day is wow. that way. Um, other than when we have services or when we go out, we we went to the Grasshoppers game. We took them to the Grasshoppers game a couple of weeks ago. So, mm -hmm. but that's a typical day at Teen Challenge. How many do you typically have in your program? You uh, our capacity is 24. We're actually working to where we can have 34, and that's our goal and our in our vision and our dream. We have 19 right now. Mm -hmm. Now, do these people have to be uh, committed Christians before they can enter your program? I mean, do you make that a requirement? No, they don't. Um, they have to be open to it, mm -hmm. to hearing Christ-based teachings and the gospel and things like that because it's such a big part of our program, but they in no way have to be a professing Christian before they come in. Well, let me ask you this, and I, 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 this is, I, I want to be sure I phrase this in the right way, but I know from my personal experience over the years that uh, not everyone is, is immediately open to mm -hmm. the gospel message. Uh, do you ever have someone that just says, oh, this isn't for me, I, I'm, I'm not going to fool with this? We do. Um, and it's cool how the Holy Spirit will work in, uh -huh. in revealing Himself to them. And, um, you know, I tell the guys a lot of times they come for court or for their wives or to please their mom or dad or whatever. And I say, you know, it's okay that you came for that reason, but I'll tell you it's not going to be the same reason you stay. And what I've seen happens is they might kind of stiff arm the gospel or stiff arm the Holy Spirit, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But eventually what brought them to Teen Challenge, whether it be court or trouble, um, what keeps them is that they start to see how good God is and He starts revealing Himself to them. And that causes them to want to keep staying and pursuing mm -hmm. Him.